Hello, this is Kyle Allender of Christian Idealism, and today I wanted to send you guys a little video about what is the defeat condition. So I get this question asked a lot, and I'm just here to explain what it is and its relation to theodicies. So the defeat condition is a kind of term that started with Chisholm and was later adopted by a philosopher named um, Marilyn McCord Adams. And so she uses this as a kind of, sorry, my uh, bird is chirping. Anyways, with that in mind, what is the defeat condition? Well, it's a term that was came from Chisholm and was later adopted by Marilyn McCord Adams. And she uses that in her work to argue basically that this is the condition that God has to, I guess is a moral condition we could say, um, for any evils that exist within a theistic worldview. So if we assume that God exists um, and there is evils in that world, in order to say that the evils are justified or justifiable, those evils must be, at bare minimum, defeatable evils. So they must be defeatable evil. They must be evils that that can be defeated. Now, what is defeat? Well, defeat has a very specific definition, and Marilyn, this is how Marilyn kind of lays it out. She says that defeat happens when an agent or a creature can take and, un and can, can grasp the evil that they experienced, and then they can integrate it as a part of their identity. Well, what does that mean? Well, it just means that they can create a life narrative, a life story from their perspective about why the evil was actually not necessarily good. It's not a greater good sort of thing, but rather how the evil is actually a part of what makes them unique as an individual and that they come to embrace or recognize um, how that evil or how the suffering that they went through was able to contribute to their identity. So that's the basic idea. If you want to put it in very simple terms, basically the idea is that evil is defeated when it is integrated as a compossible part or a part of a compossible valuable whole. So again, we're going off of value whole paradigm by which the evil um, being integrated. So basically you can think of it like this. Like let's say, um, you know, Let's say you're looking at some art piece and there's some ugly elements to that art piece, right? Well, that art piece, in some sense, you could say, is going to have some ugly elements. But if you look at the art piece as a whole, oh, it's actually a really good art piece. So in the same way, an agent can look at their life and they see their life as a whole, or at least from their perspective, whatever age they're at, and they see, oh my life is actually really good in the whole, and I can recognize that this evil that I experienced at this point in my life actually contributed to it being good in the whole. So that's the basic idea um, behind the defeat condition, where basically an evil is defeated when it is integrated as a part of a viable, compossible whole that that whole, in this case, would not be valuable. It would not be the kind of value um, on this holistic picture without that ugly element or without that evil. And so that's basically what the defeat condition is. Now, there are other kind of, uh, let's say, distinctions we can make, and I certainly will talk about those in the next video. But for this video, I just wanted to briefly explain what the defeat condition is, and hopefully now you have a better understanding. Um, finally, when it comes to the defeat condition, I just want to quickly clarify um, two things. Number one, it is a meta-theodical condition, okay? So that's the first thing, which is that this is a constraint on theodicies in general. Number two, it works as a kind of aesthetic condition in a sense, because it's taking, you know, things from art and then trying to moralize them into some moral condition that God has to fulfill. Um, so that's the other thing, which is it's inherently an aesthetic condition, but it's you know, we translate it from that aesthetic consider from those aesthetic considerations into um, into a moral condition that God has to fulfill. Um, 
And so, yeah, those are really the only two considerations. I, there was something else I was going to say, but I'll save it for the next video. Um, anyways, that's all I have to say. And I hope now you guys understand what the defeat condition is, why it's important. And yeah, the next video I'll be explaining uh, two types of defeat and I'll get into that, but that'll be for the next video. So keep that in mind.